Hi, welcome to tutorial from Robojax. In this video, we are going to control the color of an RGB LED using ESP32 over Wi-Fi from a rem remote location anywhere in the world using MQTT protocol and I.O. service from Adafruit. This is a screen that I can select the color, change it to any color that I want. As you can see, as, as I move the slider, the color is changing in MQTT. This is a service from Adafruit, and this is a serial monitor where I can move the slider. The color changes also. We can see it on the serial monitor. Or we can use the color picker to just select any color we want. Let's get started with this. ESP32 starter kit from SunFounder. This is the best ESP32 learning kit from SunFounder. It has this ESP32 microcontroller which has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This board can do everything Arduino Uno can do or many other Arduinos can do, plus extra more features. Because we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the possibilities are endless. You can get connected to the cloud or do the control or read information or values via your mobile device or your desktop or over the cloud from a far location. It comes with a camera extension kit where you can stream the video over Wi-Fi either through the cloud or to your network and also it comes with micro SD card where where you can save uh, images on the micro SD card or you can write from the device any information, log the information on the device and read it back. You can power the board using this included 18650 lithium battery and it has built-in charger where you can connect micro USB and charge the battery. The kit comes with 320 pieces of component that you can learn tons of projects. In the previous lessons, we learned how to uh, use and control the color of an RGB LED with ESP32. This is ESP32 with an extension board from SunFounder. We are going to use it this time over Wi-Fi, and we are going to use the MQTT protocol from uh, Adafruit. And we have three sliders. We can select R, G, or B, R, and based on the color that we select, we can change the color. And also we are going to use the color picker and MQTT protocol is, so we are going to subscribe to a topic uh, on the MQTT and this will read the subscription. The, this portion is called the publisher. We are publishing values to MQTT broker and this is as a subscriber to that topic where we can get it. So this pulls the subscription value and whatever is the value, it sets the RGB LED color. This lesson is very useful. We are going to learn how to use a slider uh, with Adafruit I.O. and then we are going to read how, we are going to learn how to read that particular feed uh, as a subscriber with ESP32 and pull it individually. Each slider has separate value and we can set the color for this. But uh, also I created this color picker where we can send where this from this color picker where we can send the hex value of R, G, and B and then we should be able to pull it, extract and separate all the three colors and set the color. So this is a good learning project in terms of programming and in terms of extracting MQTT value. Let's get introduced to MQTT. MQTT stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. Uh, why we need it? Because it's lightweight and efficient. MQTT is bidirectional. MQTT can be scaled to millions of things. 
and it uses a reliable messaging delivery system. It is secure and it is persistent over unreliable network. So first we have to understand the elements of MQTT. We always need to have a broker and uh, we have MQTT subscriber, we have MQTT publisher and the most important thing in the broker is the topic uh, for which that messaging is being published or subscribed. Now this is Internet of Things from MQTT.org and we have client broker and another client which is subscriber. In this case we have a temperature sensor sends information to the broker and the temperature is listed or queued on the cloud and our subscriber can read or fetch a particular topic, in this case temperature. The topic is temperature and we read the temperature. And if we use a microcontroller such as Arduino or ESP32, this, uh, in this case we use it as a publisher and we have MQTT broker, in this case we are using Adafruit I.O. and then we have MQTT client, in this case a subscriber, a lab, uh, mobile device or a computer. So the temperature from uh, temperature sensor is read by ESP32 and because this acts as a publisher we are publishing it as a topic of temperature to the broker and it is being listed and queued there. It just waits until the request comes or uh, the device is connected so we can read the temperature on the screen. That's was how it is used as a publisher. Now let's see how we can use it as a uh, subscriber. We have Adafruit uh, MQTT broker service and then ESP32 is used now here as a subscriber and we have subscribed to a topic called LED and then uh, MQTT, MQTT client is publisher is publishing on off uh, to the uh, MQTT broker so when they touch or click on an uh, icon on or off the information is queued here for the LED topic. Remember this is a topic and we can have millions of topics so one topic is called LED and because we have subscribed to that topic of LED, the information comes, either that topic says high or low or on or off, depending on that we interpret and read the information and we turn on and off the LED based on the uh, action that is taking on the screen. Now let's click on Adafruit I.O. We're going to create an account Click here on the sign in. Let's create an account here by click sign up. So once you open an account, log in. Now, once you logged in, you can click on dashboard here. Click on dashboard and you will see all your dashboards. I'm creating a new one so you can see it. Uh, RGB less than 50. I just named it less than 50. So this has been now created. Now click on it. So you can see this blank screen, don't worry. And here, from this gear, click and create new block. Now, we could do a block and also we, can, we could do group. I will prefer group, let's go to the feed and let's, in here we can create new group for RGB color for the feed. So this is just a feed group. Here the feed have been created. From here we create the feeds so they are being grouped and they are being named like this dot green. So click on this plus sign and then let's name it. 
green. You see, as soon as I created green, it added RGB LED less than feed dot green. So it added this RGB LED less than feed. And then we can create uh, green, red. It should have been RGB. I forgot the order. So blue. So this, uh, these are the key that we are going to use in our um, code. Now go to dashboard and click on the uh, appropriate dashboard, in this case ours. Click here and create new block. And then we need to uh, create three sliders for red, green, and blue. Click. And from here we can see the feeds. So create red and then go next. From here we can just type here red and the zero the maximum is 255 because we know the RGB color is 8 bits and then create. Red has been created. Create block, slider, scroll down, red, green, this type, next, this time go to green and type green. This is just a name for you. And the value minimum is zero, maximum is 255. If you want to limit the value so it doesn't go below certain value, also set your minimum to something else. So that's green and then create a new block. Blue. The minimum is zero, maximum is 255. So we have created these three. Go to the feed, and then let's create color picker. So this is done. Now let's go to dashboard, listen, and here create a new block. And this time, this is color picker, select it. And then from this screen, Select this color picker and let's name it color picker and done. So we have created all these. This is done. If you need to know the name of these, click on feeds and here. You can see the names blue, green, red, and you can change them. How you can change the key? Let's say you are not happy with the key. Click on blue, and you will see this screen. Come here, feed info, and here, change that blue to whatever you want. And not the name, but the key. Change it here. But change this feed. Click here. And this is the feed. Go to here, go to the info, and this is the feed name. If you are not happy with the uh, uh, initial feed name, change it from here. So this is the prefix to the feed. And if I show you here, so RGB LED list and feed. This and after everything is done, you can click here and get the key. I'm not worried that if you see this key, I can simply click and generate a new key and all other projects will be not uh, working. So this is the username and this is the key that you use within your code. When you use ESP32 with SunFounders ESP32 camera extension module like this, it comes also with a battery on the package and it comes a built-in charger so you can connect it and charge it and disconnect and later on you can use it with a lot of power so you can power up your application very easily. And here is the wiring. I have picked this RGB LED and as you can see the second pin is uh, the longest one. So if you turn it around now it will be the second from this side. So make sure it's the second from the left. So the first pen is red, the long pen is the common, and then green and blue. I'm just inserting it like this. 
and from this point one pin is I've connected 220 ohm resistor to this point and then the, the common does not have anything then then the green one resistor 220 ohm and then the blue 220 ohm to this point where from the red it is connected the red is connected to pin 27 this is 26 and then the blue is 25 the one pin is not connected it is connected to the ground and ground is on this side not in here on that side ground is in here and these are the three wires 27 6 25 27 26 and 25 so the red is connected to 26 you can connect it in here if you're using RGB in a board like this connected just now let me explain the Arduino code this is the same as before for the RGB this portion we are defining a red pen green pen blue pen 27 26 25 and then these are the channels for P uh, password modulation channel 0 1 and 2 we are setting the password modulation frequency we have already spoken about this uh, we have defined these three variables that are holding holding the color or color or color G color B so these are uh, global variables outside any function about this so this is MQTT and a fruit MQTT and MQTT client if if you haven't watched the previous lesson let's let me show you to install it uh, let's copy that text go to library right click and paste it here and then at the fruit MQTT library you will see this button as install click to install it so this is the only library that you need then you will need to enter your Wi-Fi SSID and then your Wi-Fi password Wi-Fi is case sensitive if you enter for example instead of book if you enter lowercase b it will not work you will get error so respect that and this is the path for the IO uh, Adafruit IO server this is a port which is a secure port and here we are getting our username and the key from Adafruit which I'm going to show you so you will need to enter it as is this portion in here we are passing all the values that we set user password port and path all of them we are creating from this MQTT client an object called MQTT and we pass these values with the key and username so the object is created for the connection then we need to use other fruit uh, root certificate of authority this is for security the secure certificate uh, this certificate might expire by the time that you uh, use the code so let's replace it I'm going to show you click on file examples and scroll down click on file examples and scroll down until you see a series of examples from custom libraries a series of other fruit because we installed the library this is now shown if you don't see it restart Arduino IDE close it and open it again and make sure that the library is installed the way I've shown it after that you should be able to see it go to Adafruit MQTT library and select Adafruit secure ESP32 open it and then go around line 50 this is a certificate select the certificate go down and up to the end line up to here right click copy I'm closing it I don't need it and then select the same certificate which is around line 64 or maybe up and down doesn't matter so you know this is a certificate select it and then right click paste so the certificate must be updated if you are getting connectivity error and then we are created we have created these three objects for subscription and this is MQTT subscribe I call the subscription object 
color R, color G, color B. These are each color separate that we receive from these sliders, R, G, and B. And then for the color picker, because it sends the three color all in one, I called it color RGB. So remember, these are our objects. And we are subscribing using MQTT uh, 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 object and username. This will be RuboJax forward slash feed forward slash RGB ready color dot red. So this is my key on Adafruit and this is RGB color dot green dot blue. So these are individual color. And the last one I called it color picker. Th within my username, which is RuboJax, this should be unique. Uh, and if you have multiple of these, just put some kind of number here and on other fruit so you can have multiple values for different applications. Because I do not have more uh, colors, so more projects related to color, color, this is fine. So these are very important. If they don't uh, match, you will not be able to pull up the subscription value. And then this is, this is for RGB. We are attaching. Uh, LED setup, we are setting the channel with frequency and resolution for the RGB or the three channels, which we define at the top of the code. After that, we are attaching pen channel to the pen. This is our 26, for example, to channel 1, 25, and 27, and so forth for the three channels. This is initializing the serial monitor. These are all text. This is uh, initializing the Wi-Fi delay of two seconds. This while loop checks if the connection is not equal to every 500 milliseconds or half a second. It prints a dot until the connection happens. Otherwise, it will just print. Once the connection happens, the loop will exit. It will print a new line. This will print the text and this IP address that you have connected in your local network. And then this is initializing the certificate for the client that we are connecting. This is now these two lines are for red color. So we are getting the subscription object set callback. And this is a function that I have written color or callback. And then, then after that, we, we pass this object to our subscribe MQTT subscription as a reference. So color R is here. So remember, this is for R, and this is G. And then I put here G and G. These two are for green. These two are for blue. And these two are for RGB. And these are functions. Now let's check inside the loop. This runs the MQTT connection. And this is just printing R, R color. These three variables are at the top, just printing R and then R. So if I open the serial monitor, you will see the, this is. So this is coming from this, this line, R, G, and B. So we print R, and then the R value, and then G, and then the G value, and B, and then the v, B value. Then we run MQTT process packets with this read the subscription every 500 milliseconds. If you do need it faster, slow it down by increasing this number, like 2,000, 3,000, which is 2,000 means 2 seconds, and 3,000 means 3 seconds. And this is setting the color. Job of this one is to go and set the color based on the value. <coughs> so now this is another function. So our color, this color R callback, and then color G callback, and color B, they are all the same. I'm going to explain one of them. We are receiving the message, and this is just printing the value that we receive from the internet. And then we convert this message to a string. And this line is getting an integer, and we check if the color R is greater than 255 or less than 0, which is not allowed. This line is just keeping it within the bound. If it is out of the bound, it will set it to 0. The same way for the uh, green, and the same way for the blue. So that's done. Then for RGB, it gets a little complicated. The color is printed. But here, 
we get the color as a string, so we are converting it to string. Now this is new color. Also, we check if the length is equal seven. This was not necessary. I just put it for precaution. And first, we get the new color and extract the this portion. This is an example. If the color was B two A four eighty two, then we extract only B two. This portion. It says start from one and go to three. So this is zero one two, but so this goes from one and gets the third one. So B two is extracted. This goes from three, which is A four will be extracted. So this will extract. 8D, and every time they are extracted, it, they are being stored in a variable called the R color. So this was new color. This is called the R color, and the G color, and the B color. And then, because this is string, we need to convert it to the decimal and their hex value. So string to hex is a function that uh, gets this value and converts it to C string. And it goes to this function, and this will give us a number, uh, like it's between 0 to 255. This hex, string to hex, is a function which I've taken from this URL. Very simple. It comes, and it's being converted to uh, integer and returns. Now, set color is for, from RGB LED a project where we set the channel and then the color. This is global global variable and also this is. So this will set for red channel, green channel, and blue channel, and we'll see the color. The connection MQTT is a built-in function, which I used from Adafruit. This is just trying to connect. And it initially sets it to 3. It tries every time tries a connection, waits for 5 seconds. If it doesn't happen, it decrements at 3. 2, 1, and 0. If it is 0, then it will stay forever. And it, after 3 tries, this will not try any longer. And if the connection is established, it will print this. Otherwise, it will be stuck uh, in this uh, while loop in here. So that's the full code. Now let's see how we can select the ESP32 board. We can click here under the select board and type here ESP32 DEV. As soon as you type dev, you will see dev board. You can select it and click OK. So the board has been selected. Now we have to select the port. The, the other way to select the board is click on tools, board, ESP32, and select the ESP32 dev module. Now we have to select the port. If I click here, it shows two ports, and I don't know which one belongs to my device. Sometimes you will see, you will not see the number properly. So the best way to be sure, the right click on the Start menu, go to the Device Manager, and you will see here the ports. If I click on this arrow, it will show me the ports. One is USB Serial CH340, one the other is USB Serial Device. And here, now it's connected. If I disconnect this, one of them disappear. The one that disappeared is my board. So six stays and it disappeared. If I connect it, so it is my COM port, CH340. Now it is my COM port and I can select it. Or I can click on tool, port, and here you will see it. You can select whichever you want. Ours is COM8. Now we have successfully selected the board and the port. And this is very important. It must be done first. And here is a demonstration. I've opened the serial monitor, where the serial monitor also prints the color R, G, and B. So we can re see it. I have also brought this screen uh, from Adafruit, where we can move the sliders and also see the color here. The default color, uh, as it seems, is 0, 0, 0, so it's all off. But as soon as I make any changes, the color is reflecting. We see R is 0, G is 0, B is 173, and we are reading it. The latency, 
depends on your internet. It's very fast, uh, and if your internet connection is fast, you will get very low latency. And then let's change the G as green as zero, and let's change the R, G, and B, all of them, 255, 255, so we are getting almost, let's set it to green, as you can see, green is 255, and that R and G or R and B are zero. Red, and now red is 255, green and blue are zero. So it's perfectly responding, and also we can see it on the serial monitor. And we can do also from color picker. That's a color. If you don't see the color properly, it's due to two reasons. One is my camera, second is the lighting, and, uh, and also the closeness of the camera uh, causes to, so you can see the color together, but the reflection shows very close color to this. So this color is the same, similar to this color, and also you can see the values. Perfect. For RGB LED, we have three LEDs in one, which I'm going to explain it one by one. And we are going to connect them. And to understand RGB LED, we first, uh, let's have a look at the LED. LED is light emitting diode. It has two pins. One pin is called anode, which is positive. The positive is always long, the anode pin. And then the other pin is called cathode, and it is short. Here is the symbol for the same LED. We have a triangle with a line, and uh, most of the time they put one or two arrow here to show it is light. The anode is on the back side of mm, this uh, triangle, and the side that has line, it's called cathode. And to turn the LED on, we cannot connect it directly to the power. We have to put a resistor to reduce the amount of voltage that is coming. So we are using it as a voltage divider right, like this. The resistor can be connected between anode and positive like this and the cathode is going to the negative. And this is the actual shape. So this is 220 ohm resistor. You will connect it. This pin must be the anode pin, the long pin. So it has been cut and it is connected so the LED will turn on. We can have the resistor on the other side. So the anode is connected directly to the positive and the resistor can be on the cathode and the effect is the same, there is no difference. And here is the RGB LED. RGB LED, however, has, uh, has three LEDs in one. So red, green, blue, RGB, RGB, they are connected like that. If the anodes are all connected together, it's called common anode, and we have one pin for the positive, and then we have uh, separate pins for the cathode, so this is called common anode, or we can have it as like this, common cathode, which the common will be connected to the negative, and the anode are separate, so we can control each. RGB LED is sold like this, with four pins, or as a surface-mounted device, like this. Sometimes you can see it as a module, which all the resistors are already uh, mounted, so you have all the four pins and you will just connect it. So we have common and then red, green, blue. Uh, for the common anode, the resistors are connected at the cathode because the, because the anode is common. So we are connecting each resistor for each uh, LED in this package. Or we can, if it is common cathode, then the cathode will be connected to the ground and the resistors will be connected to the anode of each resistor to divide the voltage and allow two, two volts for the LED. Here's the actual uh, 
RGB and here is the picture with a proper explanation from some founder. So if we divide it in two uh, pen of the right, two pen on the left, the two pen on the left, the second one from the left is common, which is the longest one. And here we can see this is a longer pen and that is our common. And then from the left we have red, green, blue, R, G and B. And here this is our R and then G and then B. So you cannot make a mistake. If you put it like this, then the longest on the right side and that's incorrect. So we are going to use it like this. Now I'm on the Bing search engine. Just type RGB color picker with slider. And the first one that comes, click on it. To understand the color of RGB, we have to first know that all colors can be created or any color can be created from combination of R, G, and B. This area shows the actual color that we have created. And because there is no color, the red is zero, the value is red is zero, green is zero, and blue is zero. So we see black uh, color. Now, if I move this, you see some red here. And this is maximum value. Why 255? Because it's 2 to the power 8. So we have 8-bit color resolution, which means from here to here, we have 255 steps to add or adjust the color. Of course, there are higher bit rates that can be done. For our purpose, we are using 8 bits. So this is red. Now, if I slide it back, the value, you just read it here, pay attention. And this is green, maximum green, light green, and then dark. And then this is blue. So we got these three colors. Now, the value could be shown also in hex. Pay attention, this is a hex value, but those are RGB. But we are paying attention to this. Now, let's have red and let's put green. So this is red, this is green, and if you combine it, you get yellow color. And if, if we have red and if you put blue, then we get pink color. So this is the combination of red and blue. Now I'm bringing that down. This is green now. Green is the maximum. Now if I bring red, you know it, it was red and yellow, but blue and green will create the sepia, uh, this color. And if I bring all the colors, it will be white. This is uh, interesting. If you combine the right proportion of R, G, and B, red, green, and blue, you will create a white color. And now, if we pay attention, this is 255, 255, 255. Now, this color is red is 0, and then we have green and blue, 255, 255. That's why we are getting. And if you want pink, so red is maximum 255, and then 255 is a blue. If we put them at the middle, you will create um, a darker pink because we are moving these two together, 82, 82, or 83. So they will be the same. Now, the fun starts when you play with these values and you create like different color, orange, you see somewhere here. If we have full red, and blue is zero, green is at the middle, that's, uh, you see we are creating orange. If I bring that here and this, we have different kind of blue. So we, with all this, we can create different color that we want and uh, we are going to practically test it and see it here.